Relevance. When making arguments to convince others to your way of thinking, it's only natural to find dramatic ways to convey your point of view. It's fair to ask if the information is accurate and relevant. For example, is there anything relevant about this Canadian train in protecting wild salmon runs in California? Not really. But wait, let's see if we can make it relevant to make a connection. The light coming from the train lets the train engineer see what's ahead. Shining light on the arguments made by those who want to build a peripheral canal lets those who care about California's native salmon push back with facts. So with a few twists of words, we can make this train image relevant. This is relevant too. You're taking a ride down Market Street in San Francisco. The year is 1905. You know what is to come. A year later, this same ride with very different scenery. It was true in 1906, and it's true now. California earthquakes are a part of our lives. To some, using people's fear of quakes can be a forceful propaganda tool. California Department of Water Resources came up with an extensive risk analysis of the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. The conclusion was that there was a 62% probability that an earthquake of magnitude 6.7 or greater would happen in the vicinity of the Delta region. Other Salmon Water Now videos have documented the state of the Delta. And we've shined a light on a few of the major players in California who we believe have had a role in its recent decline. We have to find a, a better way to move the water that originates in the Sacramento River watershed to the, the, the southern part of the Delta so that it can be pumped. They are using fear to convince you that this is a good idea. This shows how multiple levee failures on multiple islands will cause a sudden migration of water from the delta. The surge of water onto the islands creates a void of sorts that new water would fill. That water would initially come from the west, the saltier water from San Francisco Bay. In this simulation, the fresh water is illustrated in blue, saltier water in red. The salt water would come in. The delta would become an undrinkable source of water supply for more than 25 million Californians until levee repairs are made and dam releases upstream can push westward the saline water. As an ecosystem, the delta would be changed forever, with open water habitat replacing the land water connection that provides food and life for the estuary. Dr. Robert Pike is an expert on the delta. He's a geotechnical engineer who has studied and worked on the plumbing system that is at the heart of the delta debate. He knows the levee system that the delta is today. That video is brilliant propaganda. Uh, but unfortunately, it's factually incorrect. So the big earthquake fear is part of the big lie that Big Ag is using to get their big canal. The conclusion was that there was a 62% probability that an earthquake of magnitude 6.7 or greater would happen. The assumption that an earthquake on even the Hayward Fault would cause the flooding of 20 islands is extreme. The Delta would become an undrinkable source of water supply for more than 25 million Californians. The implication that 20 million people are cut off from all their water is incorrect, is false and misleading. There's enough storage in the system uh, for the urban water users to survive for even six months. The Delta would flush out naturally in a relatively short period of time probability of any levee failures can be much reduced. Dr. Pike says the earthquake fear is being used to push the canal. There's this public drumbeat through newspaper articles and editorials for the importance of having an isolated conveyance because of the earthquake vulnerability of the Delta levees, which was picked up 
by the more political people associated with uh, the water contractors. And at what cost? If you take away the arguments about water use, the environmental consequences, and the audacity of the plan, you get down to the cost. I'm also going to propose a $14 billion water project so to make sure we have a, a reliable water supply. Without any doubt, if you put it all together, it's a $40 billion plus project. No one has a clue how much the canal would push California's fiscal mess deeper into the ground. But fortunately, there are voices of reason being raised to help all of us understand that there are much less costly alternatives to the canal. Dr. Pike teamed with economist Jeffrey Michael at the University of the Pacific and put together this report. It makes the case that there are better, cheaper, and more effective ways to fix the delta than building a peripheral canal. You can see the full report for yourself at this web address. The decision to move forward and build a peripheral canal is moving down the tracks. Here's what you can do. Tell Governor Brown that you want that train stopped. Tell him that it's time to kill the canal. There are better, cheaper, and less destructive ways to ensure a reliable water future for you and your grandchildren. Tell him that the water they want to move around the delta is salmon water.